and this is them up close and personal. Bottom one being the moisture resistant, middle one being the standard, top one being the fencer. Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How are you keeping? Today's video is a follow on from the last two videos that we did. Two weeks ago, we machined a piece of standard MDF. And we found out that we could use standard MDF as an MDF to use for moldings and get good finishes with. Last week, we also did a test, as you can see beside me. We got three different types of MDF. We tested Finsa, moisture resistant and standard MDF. And we compared the finishes between the three. You don't know the results go back and watch that right now worth a watch but today's video is actually about the fencer itself finding out what kind of finishes we get with the fencer hydro fugo and see if it's worth its fortune so in last week's video we found out that fencer is about three times the cost of standard mdf with moisture resistant being kind of in the middle but I did get quite a few messages saying that people would only use Fincer, hence the reason I'm following on on this one. I want to see what kind of finishes that we do actually get when we spray, and that's the main reason for this video. So what I've got is two Fincers, okay? We've got two of the same samples, been machined at the same speed. To be honest, they've all been machined at the same speed. So what we have is the standard, the moisture resistant, and the Fincer Hydro Fugo. We've also got a spare Fincer. What the aim is to do is to brush on primer, the paint, on all edges first, let that dry and show you what the edges look like dry. This one I'm going to treat a little bit differently because Fincer is meant to be so good. Okay, well, let's see if we can spray directly onto that. Let's see if we can spray that molding straight away and it accepts the paint. I'm not going to prime that edge, but the main bit about this video is how good a finish can we get with a fencer compared to the other two types of MDF. Got my paints, got my brush. Let's go ahead and roll out the edges on these three samples. Remember, we're leaving one Hydro Fugo alone, not touching that. We're going to just go straight on with the spray, see if it accepts the spray straight away because it's quite unlikely, even though it's really high quality and really, really dense. I've got my doubts. But there we go, I put them in order of how good they are. Okay, so you can just tell what is the MR, what is the standard, what is the fencer. If you look at the bottom one, it's very rough. If you look at the middle one, it's got a little bit of roughness. If you look at the top one, it's pretty smooth. And I'm actually thinking they are a bit like sandpapers. So we're gonna go for the 240, 180, 120. That's what I would say. But do you know what? There isn't a whole load of difference between the standard and the fencer. I am a fan of the standard because for me, a lot of it is value for money, 100%. But we are gonna just sand those back now. We're gonna give them a little tickle with P240, see how much effort goes into getting those up nicely, and then we'll start spraying. We're just gonna give each edge a going over, seeing how much work we need to go on them to be able to get it to a nice finish. Right, I'm trying to aim to do the same amount sanding on all three pieces, okay? This is how I've got them all up. Don't look too bad, all of them. All had about a minute, and you can see how nicely they've all come out. But it just goes to show that all three of them still need a little tickle. It's not like the fencer, you just machine it, and then you spray it, and it's done. It still needs sanding. And my point being is, the standard MDF is very, very close to that. So why spend the three times the amount if it's near enough the same amount of finishing? Anyway, the results will be in um, a little bit later. All right, give them a quick tickle. Yeah, so this is an airless sprayer. It's the 595. We're spraying at about, well, we will be at about 1600 PSI because it's quite cold. The paint's quite thick. We're using a 310 tip. We're using the airless sprayer. Obviously, it's not a compressor sprayer. Let's go for it. So it's quite heavy. It will soak in.
There we go, swapped them over and just gonna do the same amount of spray on this piece. Right, so this is the MR. You can see it's got a little bit of pitting, maybe because I didn't rub it down long enough. Um, but overall, that probably needs a bit of a fill um, if you didn't want to see any pitting. So this is the standard and it's got less pitting on the edges. It's mainly just a little bit fluffy and this is the surface. A few flex less than the MR MDF. This is the fincer. The finish is pretty damn decent, not gonna lie. Seeming as we're rubbing all these samples down after first coat, I'll be interested to see how these two fare once they get the equal treatment as I do to all my pieces. They're gonna get a little hit with P240 in a moment with the orbital and a bit of sandpaper on the edge and then they're gonna go for the final two coats. So we'll see how they fare after their last two coats, which is gonna come in just a moment. But this is the edge. It's definitely the best edge. And I suppose you'd expect that. And this is the finish. But be aware, there are still flecks, okay? You can see I'm still, still trying to zoom in. There's probably half as many as the standard. Let's move on to the sample that just came off the router table. I don't know if you can hear that, it's, it's still rough. But it's not stupidly rough. It needs treatment. It needs sanding is what I'm trying to say. And let's look at the flex. Let's see if there are any flex. Yeah, still are flex showing. So it's not absolutely flawless. It's still very good. Not going to complain. Okay, ready to spray these samples. On the second coat, I always go a little bit less heavy. Okay, so it's going to be more like a little dusting. Let's go ahead and spray the non sand piece. Our right, next step is to just let that all dry. Let's go ahead, do the final coat. So that one was just a light little coat. Let's go ahead and spray the unsanded sample for the last time. All we need to do is just let that dry, gonna leave it overnight, manage to get two coats of paint on these four samples in one day. So we're gonna come back in the morning and we will see the final results, so don't go anywhere. Right, are you ready to see the results? Let's grab the samples, take them in the workshop and get some good close-ups. Okay, and here they are, the four samples. Let's go over the three main samples first. The ones that we um, sanded and primed those edges first on, and then we'll go on the unsanded sample last. But you can just see from the sheens on all of them that they haven't come out too badly. And I've actually had a look, and it is quite a close call, to be honest. The only um, telling sign for me, really, are the mouldings. So let's take a look at the MR MDF first because that was the one that was the weakest link in the last video. You can see on the edge, the weakest link for me is the molding as it was fluffy when it was machined. Even though we primed it and sanded it back and then gave it a few hits, it probably still could do with a little bit of filler on the edge or another sand back in between coats, in between every coat to be honest. But the face has come out quite nice. There is nothing wrong with the face. It's um, flat, there's no flex, and pretty happy with that, to be honest. Let's move on to the standard. Remember, I buy my standard from Lords, and I've bought it from all sorts of places. I bought it from Moran's, I bought it from other online suppliers. This is by far the best. It's dense, it's heavy. As you can see, it's given me some awesome finishes. And I personally think no filling is needed at all on that one. Let's move on to the fencer. So the molding is the best out of the three, no doubt about it. Again, in my last video, we talked about the difference between the two, the Vincer and the standard for me, using my Lord's um, materials. Um, 
there isn't a lot in it. Remember, they had the same amount of work on both. Not 100% flawless, but it's, it's probably the best. And I am gonna put my hands up and say, yes, it is the best, but there isn't a whole load of difference between the two. So here are the samples side by side. We've got the unsanded versus the primed and the sanded. Okay, so let's have a look at the top. Pretty flat, no flex. There isn't much difference whatsoever. Molding wise, so on the primed and sanded, there isn't many flaws in this whatsoever. Whereas this one over here, it's still got a bit of texture. Still very good. And if you just gave that a little rub with P240, then it would come up just like the other one, I'm sure of it. So it just goes to show that it is worth priming and sanding the edge, no matter what material you use, you're still gonna have to put that labor in to get it up to the finish that you require. There's no point just buying the expensive material thinking that you can just machine it and paint it and then it's gonna be done for you because it's not. It's still too fluffy and too rough and unfinished for that. What we'll do is we'll stack up the materials and try and see them all side by side just to show you the difference between the three. And this is them up close and personal. Bottom one being the moisture resistant, middle one being the standard, top one being the fencer. You can see slight texture differences between the three how much difference can you see all the faces in my eyes came out pretty much the same so i don't think the finish on the faces at all are any different let's see if i can split them apart and show you the faces too fincer the standard and the moisture resistant all pretty good and all acceptable on any level in my eyes and to be honest, there wasn't a huge amount of difference with the unsanded version of the fencer. So there is the video. There are the answers. It's up to you to decide what you think you're going to use. Remember, I buy good quality standard MDF. You can buy rubbish out there, fluffy stuff. The stuff that I have is very dense. It's very heavy. Um, a lot of people have written in their messages that standard is all crap and it's floppy and it's rubbish. In my eyes, that's not the case because as you can see beside me, we've been using um, standard for a long, long time. We've been using the same supplier for a while now and we get pretty awesome finishes um, with it. We've got no complaints. And if it was rubbish, do you think I'd be running a business using the standard? The answer is no, because it's still very good quality. The quality of the MDF has raised a level in the last few years and I'm sure of that. But um, yeah, the results are there for you to make your mind up. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be sticking with the standard MDF. Don't know if you've changed your mind. I'm gonna try and do a video soon where I do a weight test. I'm gonna have a strip of all three. I'm gonna hang them off of, say my bench, put some weights on and see how they deflect because that was another thing in the messages you said that um, the fin so is so much more dense. It just doesn't flop around when you carry the sheets. Um, again, I've had no problems with the standard. It is very, very dense. It's not like that. I know the difference between good and bad quality. It's all about where you get your standard MDF from in my eyes, okay? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have, like and subscribe the usual. Have a great Sunday, guys. I'll see you next Sunday. Take it easy. Ciao for now. Goodbye, Sean.